Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to another special edition of the Gospel Truth broadcast. And today is my third and final day to be talking with Connie Weiskopf. And Connie, thank you so much for coming on. I tell you, thank it's you. been good. And yesterday, especially as we were discussing this, I, I was touched. I had some of my camera crew <laughs> talk about that they nearly cry. And I know that there are a lot of people that are seeing this maybe from a different standpoint because of your testimony. So I just want to thank you, Connie, for being vulnerable, opening up yourself, talking about mistakes that you've made because I believe it's changing the lives of people. So, Thank you for blessing. having me. That's awesome. And anyway, some of the things that I want to discuss today are uh, you actually would have been much better qualified probably to talk about the statistics of this. We've been talking pretty much on a personal level about how it affected you and how that you found forgiveness and God dealt with you. But, you know, some of the lies that are being told primarily by Planned Parenthood, but by a lot of different people are that, you know, that there is the woman's safety is involved in uh, pregnancies, termination of pregnancies, and it's good for the child, which I've never understood that one. And they just put out all of these different things. Give us some of the details and the actual statistics and percentages of like pregnancies that are actually like a risk to the mother or something like this. Well, we were talking it's less than, it is like 0.05% of all abortions that are performed are for a medical reason and believing in God's healing, I think that could that, yeah. eliminate it to zero. But, but you know, it's not presented that way. It's presented like that if you were to say something against abortion, they're immediately going to say, but what about these women that their life is at danger? Right. And that's one of their main uh, criticisms yeah. against anti-abortion people. And yet it's statistically nearly an insignificant amount. Yes, many more women are harmed through abortion than ever through childbirth because that is one thing they'll say too as well you know it's more dangerous for you to go through childbirth than it is to abort your yeah, baby I and heard that's that, a lie. And I, I thought that was an absolute lie. It is. So and I don't know the numbers on that but it's much higher through abortion and again we don't have um, accurate statistics on that because only a portion of either the women who are harmed or exp have, have died from abortions are reported because of how it's done. I've also heard that in New York and California that they aren't required to report all abortions. No. So this 52 million since Roe versus Wade is not a full count. Right. There's probably many more, um, especially now we have RU486, which is a a, a drug that you would take to terminate. Is that what terminate. called the morning after pill? The morning after pill is a different. That is taken the morning after. RU486 can be taken up to 46 days after conception. Oh, really? So now you have a woman who goes home. There, she's. It's a two. It's two pills. So not all of those. They're trying to keep statistics on those, but not all of those are reported. It's very expensive too. So again, it's like $500 for a woman to obtain these drugs. She, she takes the first drug, she goes back in two to three days, takes the second, goes home. They send her home to deliver a, a dead baby on her own. The trauma to these women has to be and great. Why do they, I, I, this may be too graphic, but wouldn't you have to dispose of this to see yes. your child flush down a toilet? Yeah. Is that what they do? They'll either flush it down a toilet or if it, at 46 weeks that baby is quite large. Or at 46 days, I'm sorry, 46 uh -huh. days, that baby's quite large already. So they, they're going to have to dispose it I've on their own I've seen these somehow. little models, and you would know this much better than I do, but they show when the baby's heart starts beating when its eyes develop, that they're yeah. sucking their thumb. Do you know the ages on these Well, things? again, at three weeks, your baby has a heartbeat. At five and a half weeks, your baby has everything. Its skin is just very thin, and its, its little fingers aren't quite as extended yet, but your baby has brain waves. Your baby has um, feelings, and they even say that at five weeks, your baby has emotions. We've seen now women coming out of the abortion clinics who who've witnessed actual abortions, watching babies move away from the instruments at that early of an age where the world and the, 
the physicians would tell you that it's still a blob of tissue at that age. I have women who've, who've had three children not know that their baby is that developed, believing those And lies. you know, scripturally, I'll go into this more detail, separate from our interview, but scripturally, you know, John the Baptist was six months into the development and he leapt for joy. Amen. And then we have this movie that I, when I was associated with the Pregnancy Center more, we used to show the silent screen. Mm. And they actually have ultrasounds and show babies that experience feeling and hurt and pain. And I forget the exact number of weeks, but I mean very young into a pregnancy. And so the lies that is being told that this is just a blob of tissue and it's not a person, it's not scripturally correct, the medical evidence shows that it's not correct and it's just like all of the teaching I've done on evolution. It is not based on fact. It's people have a mindset. They want the convenience right. of not having to put out the money or to not deal with the emotion of a, a, a single mother or whatever the stigmatism is and it's a convenience thing. Um, yeah, there's so many single moms out there. I'm also involved with a ministry that helps single moms outside of the pregnancy care centers, but it's the stigma in the church, too. We were talking earlier that, you know, pastors, we're, we're trying to share with pastors because the, it's a hard topic, first of all, to talk to your, your congregation about. But, you know, again, in the church, if you look out on a Sunday or a Wednesday at your congregation, Every third person, you have them stand up. They've been involved in an abortion, have done an abortion. Again, we talked about the men. That's not including the men who have come alongside of these women and made that choice as well. So to start sharing the truth. Now, this statistic, is that uh, just like, a, I guess, a general population? One-third of all women have In childbearing age. So you're not talking about, although my youngest client was 11. You're kidding. That had an abortion or came in with a pregnancy? That came in with a pregnancy. Wow. Um, I don't have a number on the earliest abortion on a, on a young, and now that's a little girl. Um, so our world is, you know, again, we talked about marriage, you know, having sex outside the marriage covenant. We talk about that a lot, trying to get girls to see that that's, God made sex great, but mm -hmm. He made it great in marriage, that's not right. outside there's of marriage. There's nothing wrong with sex. It's just the perversion that's right. of sex that's wrong. And so, and there's this piece of our hearts too that know that, even though, even non-believers, we are geared to know those things. So making a choice for abortion, again, maybe they won't get caught. Maybe they, they can hide this fact. Well, you can't hide it from yourself. There's probably some women that would say, but you know, how am I going to deal with this? I, how, how do I deal with getting pregnant every year or something? Well, first of all, you <laughs> use abstinence Amen. and morality. You don't have to use abortion for a method of birth control. Murder yeah. is a wrong alternative right. for all of these kind of things. Also, you mentioned the men, but do you see men in your pregnancy center? I would assume it's primarily women you deal with. We do. Um, just in this last month, we had three men walk through our doors, young men, the first one, his girlfriend was going to make that choice, and he was asking for help from us how he could stop her. He did not want his baby. He knew it was a baby. Now, they weren't married? They were not married. That's a very um, common trend right now. Marriage seems to be taboo. We talk about the benefits, you know, again, biblically, what benefits there are to the marriage covenant. You don't get the same benefits in living together oh, or yeah. cohabitating or... And the only reason that I can see, and I've dealt with a number of people on this, the only reason I can see that people don't get married is because it gives them an easier right. out. It's less commitment. Yep. That's the only justification that I can yeah. see. So, and that takes two people, so... And if you're going to have a relationship with the person who's going to right up front say, I don't want to commit to this relationship, That's well, right. then you shouldn't be in that relationship. That's right. You know, these young kids are looking for love, and they're grabbing hold of the wrong things, <laughs> mm -hmm. and the wrong men or the wrong woman or young girl in their lives to try and fill those places that only, first of all, Jesus, we know, That's can right. fill, and they're looking for it in the wrong places. And so to make these choices and, and 
they have friends with benefits now, which is also a trend. And I first time I heard that, I was like, what is that? What friends is a friend with benefits? With benefits? Talking so, about a partner. Right. Having sex with your friends. We get in groups and we have sex. And it's You're just kidding. it's just perversion to the nth degree. And kids are just buying into this. So to talk about why it's important to wait so that you don't have to make a choice That's right. later on, you know. And I think abortion pregnancy. is given some people like a safety valve that they, they just yeah. are less moral because if, it, if they do get pregnant, well, then they can terminate it without all of the consequences. Right. But as you've expressed very well, that, that's not true. There's lots of consequences right. regardless of whether you have that child present or not. This generation hasn't known a time when abortion wasn't legal. It's a part of their lives. It needs to change um, the, the truth, sharing the truth. So the women that you say, well, not just women, but men that come into your center and stuff, how do you deal with this? How do you walk them through it? Is it all centered in them getting their relationship with God straight and receiving the forgiveness? Or? I think that's the only thing that works. And again, you know, some women, it's going to take a while because they've been to renew their mind to God's truth. You know, I don't believe, again, it should take a long time mm -hmm. for that healing to take place. But it can take steps because they have been so programmed to believe those lies that sharing the truth more than once, and it's kind of like me listening to your tapes, I have to listen to some of those things over and over before it gets into my thick skull that yeah. this is the I truth. I think it may take time for a person to come to grips and really bring this to the forefront and totally just call out to God for forgiveness. Yeah. But once you receive forgiveness, yeah. then there will yeah. be an instant miraculous Absolutely. change take place. I agree. So when a woman walks through my door, the very first thing that she's going to be just hit with is the love of Jesus Christ. We just shower her with love. Um, if they don't know who my Jesus is, I'm going to share that with them so that they can make a good choice and sharing the truth with them. But the most powerful thing is, is Jesus. His truth sets you free. Showing them the babies, getting them to see that there's hope and help out there even in an unplanned pregnancy, even if they've made bad choices in the past, doesn't mean that from this day forward, they can, we talk about renewed virginity with these kids. You know what? God can renew your virginity this very day because awesome. he's that awesome. And you can start making better choices and you don't have to choose abortion or, or, or other, you know, having sex to fill that void. It's, it's there for you. There's this incredible God again who can fill that void. So to point them to his love is the key. And then that, yeah, that I think it should be instant. That when they get that, it's there. That healing is there instantaneously. That's awesome. Well, you know, I share these things from Scripture. But I think, Connie, that you bring a different perspective on it because you not only share the Word, but you have this personal testimony. There's a lot of people that will dismiss me and say, you're a man. You don't know what mm -hmm. I'm dealing with. They can't accuse you of that. Uh, they say, I've never had to deal with this situation. You've dealt with it multiple times. And not only through your own life, but you live vicariously through all of the, what did you say, 2,000 people a year that come into your pregnancy center? Yeah, in our three centers. I see about twelve to 1,700 in mine. So. And so you deal with this in other people. And so the people watching this program cannot sit there and discount what I'm saying, because here's Connie saying the exact same things from a different perspective, not only the Word, but in dealing with these other things. And uh, I just believe that this is going to make a difference in your life. Connie, I also want to mention, you've got a website, and they can go and see what you're doing. But I wanted to spend just a few moments. We've got about, I think it's about eight and a half minutes left. And I want to spend just a few moments talking about that you've been ministering in this pregnancy center and taking the great things that God has done for you, which is great, and sharing it with these women. But now you're branching out and you're going to start traveling and ministering and teaching. Yeah, I believe God has called me to minister to more, as many as I see. And I've been training volunteers up to share the gospel and do what I do every day. And they have that heart but to go out and share in larger groups with men and women, not just my testimony, but about our awesome Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I've been 
God's training me up. I'm not the best speaker yet, but I just But your ministry he's then is me. not going to be limited to talking about abortion or no. these kind of things. You're just a Bible teacher, right? And I you'll am. be able to minister on many different subjects. Yeah. But I think that the teaching or the experience that you've gotten running this pregnancy center, and how many years have you been doing that? I've been five years. Five years, and if you deal with 1,200 and something at your center and then the other centers, uh, anyway, five times 2,000 a year, that's 10,000 people that you've dealt with. Man, yeah. you're bound to have mm -hmm. a wealth of experience that you can take and put into these examples, teaching from the Scripture. Yeah. It ought to be a powerful ministry. I just had so many people asking me, can you come and share and talk and felt God leading that, you know, how, do we, how did you get from here to there? How did you get from this um, shame-based guilt to being set free? And, and it's such a simple thing, but people, awesome. need to, people need to hear that. So I'm humbled and blessed to be able to go out and share with others. Oh, that's awesome. That's going to make a big difference in people's lives. So how do they get in touch with you? Through my website. Contact me through there. You can either email me or um, respond to me through that, through my blogs. And people have been calling and asking me, well, what about this? What about God's will? When does that come into effect? So I've been answering some of those questions when I go out and speak and on my blog as well. So it's CSWMI.org is my website. It's CSWMI.org. Yeah. And so they got all the information there. Yeah. So I guess, are you just now beginning this? Like these programs will be airing, I think, in October. Are you available when people see this to go minister? You bet. So yeah, you'll be so available by then? I will be. Awesome. So. so have you got anything scheduled yet, or are you just now starting? Well, I've been speaking at Women's Aglows meetings. I'm speaking this weekend at a father-son dinner. So I'll be addressing some of those things, but sharing, you know, some of the tools they need to live that abundant life in Christ, um, set free, healed, prospered, and delivered. Man, that's so. awesome. I am really excited. Thank and so you. it was only, what, five or six years ago that you were facing a life and death struggle yourself yeah. and got healed. And here you are five years later now beginning to take these things that God has done in your life and share them with other people. And that is God, because that is not me. <laughs> so this wasn't myself. a strength no. of yours talking in front no, of people? No, I remember the first time. I, I, I think I started hyperventilating. <laughs> I've seen the survey that they say that speaking publicly in front of people, uh, ra fear ranks above the fear of death in most people. Uh, it's rated a, as a greater fear than the fear of death. So, but yeah, I'm, again, it's God, all God. That's awesome. That is awesome. Thanks. So I'm really excited about what God's doing with you, and to see where you've come in such a short period of time is just yeah. tremendous. So we've got just uh, five minutes or so left. What would you say to people? I'd like you to address two things. People who are considering an abortion and maybe haven't adopted what we're saying, that it's actually murder. It's the termination of a life and all of the consequences. What would you say to those to prevent it? And then also I'd, I'd like you to... Take your experience and talk to women who have committed an abortion. How do they go on and deal with this and get their life back to where it's supposed to be? So the women who are considering terminating a child, having an abortion, now is the time to get educated. You need to know everything that there is about, first of all, my Jesus, and then what it looks like. What is abortion? What, what, that it's a baby. Go to a pregnancy care center. They are not there to share lies. Pregnancy care centers share, share the same statistics, the same information that Planned Parenthood is sharing. We just do it openly. We share the truth. They, they are not there coercing. They're mm -hmm. not going to tell them what to do, but they they're going to yeah. educate you on that. So find the nearest pregnancy care center or talk to mom and dad, although mom and dads are encouraging young girls to do yeah, this. because Sometimes it's a shame for them, and so yeah, they just want to slip so. it under the rug. I know that the pregnancy center here in Colorado Springs has an ultrasound machine, and they will actually do an ultrasound and show you the baby. And then once women see this baby, yeah. it changes their whole attitude. And I forget yeah. the statistics. Eighty-seven percent who see that baby. They will never abort. Yep, make a choice for life and because see, they. Planned see Parenthood it. won't show you an ultrasound of your baby because they don't want right. you to get emotionally attached. They're trying now to make sure that they have to show the mom, because they've always done ultrasounds. They just never let the mom see them. 
um, very rare that they would ever let them look and see the screen. So, yes, so educate them. Can they get on a website? How do they get these pregnancy centers? How do they find them? You can just Google pregnancy care centers, and there's, there's over 4,000 pregnancy care centers across the nation. That's awesome. Which is, the, we outnumbered now for the first time um, abortion clinics. Praise the Lord. So there's help and hope. There's women who say, you know, well, I don't want to adopt my baby out. We work with agencies that mm -hmm. are there, so at least pursue that option. Um, see if it's an option for you, and if it's not, you know, and parenting is the choice that you're going to make, then, you know, uh, one thing that pregnancy care centers do, and almost all of them do that, like we do, we offer education, we offer mm -hmm. grants for college, we offer maternity clothes and baby yep. clothes up to two years old and some further, and if, if you still need us after that, our goal is that you're prospering and living this awesome life before that baby reaches two, but if you're not, then we're going to get you, you know, hooked up to these agencies and other people who are going to help you. So you are not alone. You are not in this pregnancy alone if they are pregnant. Yeah, and the pro-abortionists will often cite that the Christians will sit there and say you aren't supposed to do it, but they won't do anything to help you. And that is absolutely untrue. That is untrue. Man, what you say, I did, that's the first time I'd heard that the pregnancy centers outnumber the abortion clinics. That's awesome. It is That is awesome. a work of the Lord. Yes. That's a miracle. So, so that's true. talking to the people who are maybe contemplating an abortion. They need to get educated, and we believe that the facts will turn them away from it. What do you say yep. to the women who've already done it? Um, find somebody to talk to, again, um, or just talk to the Lord. Go to the Word of God. He has healing and hope. He said He came to save us. Again, that word saved is healed, prospered, forgiven, set free. He has healing for their hearts. He, you Came don't to heal the broken hearted, yep. what Jesus said. Yeah, and, and it is a broken heart. One, one thing, too, is to grieve that loss, a dream, a hope, maybe, you know, that they have let go of because of that choice. Um, ask God to fill that, that dream and desire for you in your heart and receive and accept His healing. That, you know, will set them free from the life that may have been changed through that choice that they made to terminate. So to seek the Lord's forgiveness, it's already there. He already paid the price. It's a done deal. You just now have to know that, yes, you are valuable to him. Yes, his healing is for you. His forgiveness was paid for a long time, 2,000 years ago on that cross. So once they receive that forgiveness, that takes the root of all of this yeah, problem away. That is the key. Accept his finished work. I'll his tell you, healing. if people could see how much God loves them in spite of what they've done, yeah. it would heal all of their hurts. If he can, you know, he, he loves me, this, this woman who made so many bad choices. You know, I have, I told you, women calling me and men from all over now because of your, you know, sharing my testimony on your show that they're like, Ken, do you think God will forgive me? And Amen. I'm like, he already has. Now you need to know that and just accept and receive. And I believe there's going to be a lot more people contacting you after this one, especially now that you're going into a ministry and are available to speak. And I'm sure that many of you have been blessed and ministered to through this. So I want to encourage you. Once again, we have Connie's website on our screen. You can call our uh, phone center and they will give you her information. And we just want to encourage you to take advantage of this gift. God has done a miracle in her. This is a miracle sitting right here. And we want to help her to be able to get out and share these truths. So we've shared some awesome things with you. I pray that God is going to speak this into your heart. And please listen to our announcer as he gives you this information about how you can receive our materials. On today's program, Andrew interviewed Connie Weiskopf. If you'd like to learn more about Connie's ministry, visit her website at cswmi.org. Andrew's complete teaching titled Christian Philosophy is available in a brand new book for £9.99. Or you can get this teaching in a companion study guide that's perfect for home groups, Sunday schools, and for individual study. It's been designed so that anyone, anywhere, at any time can reach an unbeliever, disciple a new believer, or grow with others in the Lord. Not only is the entire teaching included in the study guide, you can also print off as many copies as you'd like when you download the PDF files from the included data CD. This valuable resource is available for £17.50. 
This teaching is also available on either CD or DVD as seen on TV for 30 pounds. Go to awme.net and click on today's TV offer to see the options. The ninth audio teaching in today's series is titled Abortion. It's available for three pounds when you write or call. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will send this ninth teaching free of charge. You can use your credit card to order resources through our website at awme.net. While you're there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or you can order through our helpline Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Our helpline number is 01922 473 300. When calling from outside the UK, you must dial your international calling code, then 441922 473 300. If the lines are busy, remember you can order ministry materials 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at awme.net. To write us, use the address on your screen. We hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. He'll be in the Dallas-Fort Worth area this week for a Gospel Truth Seminar November 8th through the 10th at Calvary Cathedral in Fort Worth on Sunday, November 11th in Phoenix, Arizona for a Gospel Truth Seminar January 3rd through the 5th and in Colorado Springs, Colorado for the Karis Bible College Men's Advance January 17th through the 19th. He'll also be in Humble and San Antonio, Texas for special one night only Gospel Truth rallies January 24th and 26th. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, call our helpline or visit our website at awme.net. I had been looking for the more in my life and someone had given me a teaching tape of Andrew's and um, had shared another church with me who is also a Karis Bible College uh, affiliate up in Fort Collins. Um, so I began to listen to Andrew's tapes and seeing that Andrew had the more, was teaching the more that Jesus said we would be doing the greater, raising the dead, healing the sick, opening blind eyes. So I began to listen to Andrew's tapes and then I was diagnosed with cancer. So I got every tape that I could and it was just feeding my belief and starving my unbelief with the Word of God, with Andrew's teachings. He prayed for me just a simple prayer, um, commanding the cancer to leave my body. I went in for the surgery. Um, I was probably about a week and a half, two weeks later. Uh, the doctors called me the very next day, which is unusual, and said, Connie, we don't know what happened. All the cancer was gone. Um, of course, my husband and I rejoiced, and I said, I know what happened. <laughs> Cancer was the big sickness that came upon me, but not bigger than a cold for me anymore.